We're talking about 10 minutes in the world. A daily dose of God's word as we rightly divide. 10 minutes in the world. To prepare you for the judgment seat of Christ. 10 minutes in the world. To get your full reward properly edified with 10 minutes in the world. Hi, welcome to 10 Minutes in the Word with Brother Ron Knight. I am Brother Ron Knight of Northern California Grace Fellowship near Sacramento, California. The goal of this short study is to give you a dose of God's Word with us, to get you prepared for the judgment seat of Christ, to get a full reward. So let's begin. Today's study is again in the book of Romans. Now when studying the Bible, we always need to keep in mind that while all the Bible is for us, that is written for our learning, and we need to know it. Not every book of the Bible and not every verse in the Bible is written directly to us and about us living today. When we rightly divide the word of truth, as our Apostle Paul commands in 2 Timothy 2.15, we understand that it is the 13 letters of the Apostle Paul, Romans through Philemon, that speak both to us as well as about us living today in the dispensation of grace. So let's get back to our study in the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 1. We began looking where Paul talks about those uh, Gentile heathens who had a testimony of Almighty God, but they rejected it. That down in verse number 21, he says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkening. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. These people who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. See, my friend, man began with an understanding that they were created by a creator and they knew who this creator was when God created Adam and Eve and, and the progeny after, after Adam and Eve come mankind, God put in every man a knowledge and understanding that there is a God because man has a natural by nature born this way propensity to worship to hold in high esteem something or someone. And just like the Apostle Paul in Acts 17, when, when he saw that, that altar to the unknown God, and he explained to them who it was. They said, you know, those Athenians, they, they had all these uh, 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 altars and idols to these idols and so-called gods, little g. And, and, and yet, just in case they missed one, because they knew it was some somebody out there, you know, the man upstairs, the big man upstairs and all this other nonsense. They said to the unknown God and Paul says, hey, let me tell him you about him. And he starts to talk about God, the creator, God who, who created all the world and everything and then man. And what God said is we can enjoy the creature. We can enjoy his creation, his living. We can enjoy what he has created, but worship him. Uh, there's missionaries who go out and one missionary said as he goes out into the to the to the indigenous world and you know all that stuff um, he noticed they, they they do worship even in their in their in their primitive ways they worship the sun the moon the stars and he says hey you know what that 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 you know you worship the 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 you know, they worship everything from rats. You know, you go over to India and they got temples with rats in it and people go in there and let the rats stand on, you know, get all on them. And they worship the rats. They worship cows and so forth. I told you that stuff represents Satan, particularly the ox, the cows and so forth. OK, the cherub, the face of the cherub. And you say, well, you know, they won't eat meat. They won't eat the cow, sacred cow. Oh, Harry Carey, when I worked at Wrigley Field. And uh, somebody hit a home run. He said, holy cow, right? Holy cow. That come from India and so forth. They won't eat meat. They'll starve. They don't have protein and stuff. They'll starve from lack of protein. But the, and God provided the cows from eat the cows. Okay. God made it so you can eat them. Okay. Israel sacrificed these, um, these uh, bulls and so forth all the time. And the priest got to eat them. You got to eat them. 
you can eat them. God made it so you can eat them. They work for you, the beast of burden, these ox, but eat them too. And so they worship these things. These uh, man, four, uh, birds, four-footed beasts and creeping things. But not just things on earth. Then they look up there and they say, well, we're going to worship that stuff up there too. Go back, if you will, to Deuteronomy chapter number four. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter number four, where God, through Moses, warns Israel about that. In Deuteronomy chapter number four, verse 14, Moses said, the second, oh, by the way, Deuteronomy, the second giving of the law. Uh, when, when, when Israel came out of Egypt through Moses in Exodus, God gave the law, Exodus 19, 20 and so forth. But yet the, the men of war who led Israel astray, who, who led them to rebel in disobedience to Almighty God, God says, they're not going to enter my, my land, my rest. They're going to die in the wilderness. So it took that 40 years for their carcasses to, to go into the wilderness, the men of war. But their children, the little ones, their babes grew up in the wilderness. And so now this generation is going to go into the promised land through Joshua type of the Lord Jesus. Joshua and Jesus both means Jehovah's Savior. And so God has to give them a second given of the law through Moses before Moses dies. By the way, Moses could not go into the promised land when God told him to speak to the rock the second time. You strike the rock the first time you speak to that rock at Horeb to get the waters to come out for the people. First time he struck the rock, the law striking the rock type of Christ on the cross. But then you speak to it. No more hitting on them. You speak to it. God's going to write the laws in their hearts and so forth in the second coming of Christ. But Moses disobeyed. And Moses type of the law, the performance of that law. And Moses could not go into the promised land. He himself because of his anger, because of the wrath. Well, the law can't go in there and, 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 and harm Israel. He's going to he's going to cause them to keep his commandments. It was type of the, the uh, new covenant, Jeremiah 31 through 34. So Moses had to die. But he gave a, a second giving of the law, Deuteronomy, Deuto, two, second giving of the law to the little ones who had grown up. But here's what he said in verse 14, Deuteronomy 414. And the Lord commanded me at that time. Back in Exodus. 40 years ago to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land, whether you go over to possess it. That's the promised land, Canaan. Verse 15, take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. See that? It says you didn't see any, you didn't see anything. Don't you be making these idols. Don't make statues and so forth. Verse 16, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. Now, what would this image be? The similitude of any figure, any figure on, in, in, on earth or in heaven. Don't make a graven image of any figure. The likeness of what? Male or female. Don't make a man or a woman. Verse 17, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth. Don't make any figures of any beast. I'm from Chicago, the Chicago Bulls, and you go downtown Chicago, there's, there's uh, you know, bulls everywhere. As far as graven images of bulls, don't do that. Verse 17, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, don't make, don't make it of the, of, the, of the birds and so forth. Verse 18, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Verse 19, and, and lest thou lift up thine eyes unto, unto heaven. So he says, look, don't, don't make anything on the earth. Well, what about the heavens, Lord? Nope, don't do that too. And verse 19, and lest thou, so in addition to that, and, and lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. And when thou seest the sun, the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them. Paul talks about worship and serving over there. Don't do any of that, which the Lord thy God have divided unto all nations under the whole earth, excuse me, whole heaven. Verse 20, but the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, that's, it, that's uh, Egypt, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as you are this day. So Moses had to remind these people, don't you go and make an image and worship anything but the Lord. Go back with me to Romans chapter number one. 
And because mankind did that, in verse 26, he says, For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. They just let their affections, their emotions, affection, emotions uh, uh, run them. See, you can't allow your emotions to run you. Emotions are good, but, but emotions, that movement, it comes after they allow their emotions to run them. For even their women, see, especially when it comes to women, their emotions become uh, the, the driving force. For even their women did change the natural use. Their natural use, they were created to be the man's help. Okay? To be the wives and child rearing and the help of the man. Adam, was, God created him and help. Not a help meet. A help meet or fit or proper for him. Well, it looks like we come to the end of our 10 minutes in the word here. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, uh, your, your being with us. This is uh, my labor. I love to give the word of God out both here on these studies but also in person at our ministry a couple of times a week, Sundays and Wednesday. Uh, we appreciate um, but this is our labor of love. We, we need your support. I, I can only do this if I get support from saints and you play a part. If you're listening to these studies, you play that part. And, and you, you through your prayers and, and monthly giving, it's how we can keep these things going. OK, we, we, this is how you serve the Lord. It's fruit abound to your account. If you're getting something, Galatians six out of it, Paul says it's only right to give back. We appreciate it. We thank God for you guys. If you are saved, you're a member of the body of Christ, which means we're members one of another and we're family. Let us treat each other as such. Ephesians 432 and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And if you're not saved, once you get saved, what are you waiting for? Today is the day of salvation. The Lord is soon to come. The wrath of God is coming on this planet Earth. He doesn't want you. God's will is that all men be saved and come into knowledge of the truth. Why don't you trust him? Okay. Well, we're come to the end of this one. We'll see you next time, I pray, on 10 Minutes in the Word with Brother Ron Knight. I am Brother Ron I am Brother Ron Knight saying, until next time, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I'm talking about 10 minutes in the Word, a daily dose of God's Word as we rightly divide. 10 minutes in the Word. To prepare you for the judgment seat of Christ Ten minutes in the world To get your full reward properly at a wide way Ten minutes in the world Did you know that one day God gives you and me one thousand four hundred and forty minutes in a day to learn about our Savior and His grace and the revelation of the mystery and Paul's epistles keeping memory by spending just ten minutes in the world. A daily dose of God's word as we rightly divide Ten minutes in the word To prepare you for the judgment seat of Christ Ten minutes in the word To get your full reward properly at a fine way Ten minutes in the world